Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cup Interviews. My name is Jillian Robinson. I am the Associate Artistic Producer here at Cup of Hemlock Theater. And today I have an extraordinary esteemed guest with me to interview. It is the internationally acclaimed theater composer and songwriter, Scott Allen. Hello, Scott. How are you doing today? Hey, Jillian. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yourself? I'm doing so well. Thanks so much for asking. So part of the reason why Scott is here, Scott is actually going to be joining brilliant Torontonian performers up here in Toronto in November doing a weekend called Scott Allen and Friends. There will be a masterclass happening with Scott and then Scott and these performers will be putting on a concert at the Meridian Arts Centre. So we are going to chat about that today and we're going to talk about Scott today. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I look forward to it. Yeah. So here at the Cup, Scott, we do a little icebreaker called What's in Your Cup? So I noticed before we recorded, you are sipping on something. So I will ask you, what are you sipping on with us today? Vodka, Jillian. Vodka. No. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that can be a choice. That's it. Yeah. No. Listen, I will say this. There are some late nights where there will be vodka in my coffee cup, just because my well, coffee cups are what are around and I don't actually have any vodka like cocktail glasses so that is occasional but no right now funny enough I'm, my husband I, I got this cup for him a long time ago it was our daughter now it's um no it's like half of it. her face yeah. but it still says dada on it so at mm. least he gets to represent but i stole it this morning because nice. uh, i was uh running a little late so i was like okay i'm gonna take the dada cup and leave the the, the disney mickey mouse cup that i usually drink from uh on the counter this morning yeah nice i love what's that what's in your cup what's in my cup well the classic performer that i am i have three beverages going right now because okay, so not... we have tea water and what else and water it's a backup yeah. water today oh. which is <laughs> tea water tea, and water, water. water. <laughs> okay good <laughs> Hydrate. Do, do yes, you know that absolutely. I need to hydrate? You do. Um, it's very important. <laughs> actually, I guess why I have double water is because I actually have coffee today. Don't tell my vocal cords. Oh, I will not. Um, tell it. It's not bad for your vocal cords. That's a lie. I know. Fair. It's it is a lie. lie. That's yeah. a myth. So, this is our The Cup Cup. So, Beautiful. on brand with Beautiful. the episode we're doing, some Gorgeous. hazelnut coffee. Ooh. And then I've got my little mason jar of water. And That's then. What does my water bottle to fill that mason jar to wet the whistle as we mosey on yes. from the episode. Yeah, she got to wet that whistle. Yeah. yeah. That could be a little um, sexual, Jillian, but yes, okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's okay. We're, it's okay. we're here. We're here for we're it. We're adults. We are adults. Yes. Totally. You know, I've never okay. been to Toronto before, Jillian. This will be my very first time. I've never been to Canada. Funny enough, Amazing. I got uh, engaged in Canada in Epcot. So it's not so far off. Yes, I know. Um, you were surrounded by Canadians that work in my pavilion. My husband hates Disney World and it was pouring out and he was like so ready to leave. And he was like, what are we doing here? I was like, just wait one second. And I got everything <laughs> ready and I proposed. And he was now he like hates having to tell that story that we got, you know, engaged at Disney World. I love it. And that's okay. Yeah. But no, we did at one of the restaurants there in Cute. Canada. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing if it looks exactly like it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely, you'll see little spurts of Canadiana in Toronto, that's for yeah. sure. Where are you normally located, Scott? Like, where's home for you? I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. So we, yes, okay, we cool. just got all those hurricanes that destroyed our entire city, unfortunately. Our, yes, our, our entire city, yeah, our entire city got destroyed very, very badly. So we're picking up right now and trying to, it's still, it's it's not as bad as it looked before because we had back-to-back. So the very first one was all water. So that was just everyone's house got ruined. I mean, they I think they said that about 24,000 homes got lost just yeah. in St. Petersburg. So that, you know, that was really bad, all the flooding. Yeah. And then right after that, a week later, I guess less than a week later, all of a sudden we got the next one melting uh, and that was all wind. So there, you know, half of the homes were flooded. So all of the people had to put all of their furniture outside. So all the homes were like, you know, devastated with all these, you know, uh, furniture pieces everywhere. And then 
you know, a week later, trees are falling everywhere. And when I say trees, I don't mean like little tiny trees. I mean huge oak trees yeah. uh, falling on people's homes and destroying their homes. And, and so there's still trees everywhere and still, you know, the, the city, ha- unfortunately, has yet to pick up anything. So there is furniture and trees and, you know, everywhere. So we lucked out. A tree fell on our house, but um, it did not hurt our roof. So we were just without water and electricity for about a week. But outside of that, we are some of the lucky ones here. Right. So we are very fortunate. Yeah. Well, sending so much love from here up north. I know, yeah, the last month or so has been absolutely devastating down there. So what happens there? What is like the the major... Yeah, because we're kind of like surrounded by the Great Lakes, right? So we kind of exist in a pocket that like gets more of like a a lake pattern of weather than anything else that's going around like on the coasts. So even like by the time anything were to get, so like our East Coast, like our maritime provinces and stuff, we'll get some devastation from hurricanes, et cetera. But we are enough inland that we actually kind of usually pivot a lot of the treacherous weather patterns and like yeah, because we're surrounded really by the here. lakes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get many like tornadoes or what have you either. Like occasionally up in the more like farm open areas, we'll get more of that mm. up kind of a little bit more north. But yeah. other than that, it's, we do experience excess rain or sometimes colder or hotter than normal as I, yeah. I'm assuming that's kind of a backlash of everything yeah. going on but other than that yeah we we're pretty lucky up here when it comes to okay. to that yeah, yeah that's nice so. to hear. have you always lived in uh Canada yeah so I grew up in Windsor Ontario okay. yeah. um so it's about yeah, four hours it's right across the way from Detroit and then I personally went to to theater school up here in um Mississauga and Oakville okay. shared in college and University of Toronto have a joint theater and drama studies program. Oh, nice. So I went there for four years and then I've, I moved to Toronto. I've been here ever since. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah. What do I need? What do I need to see while I'm there? I don't really have a lot of time. I will literally yeah. be coming straight from London directly into Toronto. So I will be <laughs> doing a quick pivot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see, you know, the standard CN Tower is, you know, always, always a good, good thing to see, especially this time of year, if you have a chance to go up it and see all the sort of like the city and the fall colors. And that would be really beautiful. Usually like our, our waterfront, I always find is, is really pretty as well. And Toronto Island is across the way again, this time of year, if you have the time to jump over there, it's a good like escape from the city. Other than that, I always tell folks like see some theater or see some concerts. And <laughs> yeah, I, w- I wish I had. We'll be doing that. I will, I will be doing one and not be seeing them. I will, exactly. Otherwise, I would love to. You know, it's so funny. Whenever I go to a new city, I never have a chance to see the city. People will always say, "You know, how was Brazil? I was Australia." Yeah. And I'll yeah. say, "I don't know. You'll have to ask someone who actually saw it." I yeah. Don't. You know, it's funny. I saw it because I, I'm very, very similar to Celine Dion. Just joking. I watched that Celine Dion documentary mm-hmm. and she says that, you know, she said, people always ask, how was this city? How was this, you know, this country? And I never get a chance to see them. So it's like, yeah. you don't really get to go out. You're you're working nonstop and doing promotion. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, you know, you know, back to back to back. When I was in Australia, that was probably the thing that I hated the most is that I was there for two weeks and not once. I didn't get to see the Sydney Opera House. Okay, but, good. It was, but outside of that, I didn't really have a chance to do anything. So I, okay. st- I still look at those moments and I'm like, oh, I really yeah. wish that I would have just like decided to stay a few extra days. And now that I have a daughter, that makes it even harder to like stay right. extra days because it's like, you sort of want to run everything together and not stay away from her too long. Cause I'll be in London yeah. for a whole week and then going in for a weekend. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Jillian, I don't shut up by the way. Have you learned? That's okay. No, I, I usually don't shut up. So this is like a lovely treat of exchange of exchange of conversation. I don't, I don't stop talking. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So keep talking. I'm going to ask you to tell us about yourself and your journey. Like I know some of us watching have, your music in our rep books and or have followed your journey but for viewers and listeners that don't know much about scott allen like tell us about your artistic journey the floor is yours why thank you a little bit about me i mean i started as i wanted to be a performer 
I wanted to be a baby. I wanted to be Danny and baby. That was like my dream role. Nice. Um, and uh, it wasn't until I was 18 years old when my parents were getting a divorce that I sat down at the piano for the first time and I wrote my very first song, which mm -hmm. was a song called Kiss the Air, uh, which is one of my most popular songs now. Funny enough, it happened to be my very first song I ever wrote. Um, and I, I, you know, played it for a friend of mine. I was going to Emerson College in Boston. I played it for a friend of mine and he's like, I love it. I want to sing it. He's like, oh, great. I'm going to be a writer. And it literally was no joke like that. Then from, from there, I moved to Los Angeles. I was in a boy band called Ricochet. Don't ask. Uh, yes. <laughs> I really wanted to ask. I'm not going to lie. Oh I God. really wanted to oh ask. My God. Three <laughs> Latino boys and one gay Jewish boy. And you could yes. tell which one of us was not dancing. They were. <laughs> I was not. You know, that, that group you know, broke apart. And then I started working for this incredible, two incredible musical directors, uh, Diane Louie. And uh, when I was working with her, I, I got the chance to work with some of the best performers in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working with people that I had, you know, dreamt about, you know, you know, Tony Braxton's and the Mariah Carey's. And, yeah. You know, uh, the Mary J. Blige's and unfortunately Christina Aguilera who was a nightmare and you know all oh nightmare horrible wow rudest people you'll ever meet in your life um and that's good to know yeah so never want to work with her okay. uh, maybe she's changed I don't know maybe it was that because <laughs> changed her I don't know My Fair. God, have you seen those photos lately of her? I have not no oh go look them up okay it's good for her she's happy I'm happy for her so, uh, and then I started working for a guy named Ricky Minor, and I got to work with Mariah again. Uh, she was lovely. Uh, I worked with Destiny's Child and just some incredible performers that you sort of like are watching all these people and just sort of being in heaven because you dreamt about it. Uh, yeah. And I grew up on Mariah. So to be like sitting there and like, you know, bringing her coffee and, yeah, because yeah, I was the assistant. So I was helping Ricky in any way that was possible. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, and you know, this was dressed after September 11th uh, when, when the second time I worked with Mariah. And okay. um, she was just, just so lovely and down to earth and everything that you didn't think she would be. So it, it made the experience that much better. I mean, to be honest, the, the, I, I actually can believe that because I feel like the warmth and the depth that she has to go to, to hit those whistle tones. Like yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was very interesting. I'm going to give you something that I really have never told to anyone, but Mariah. Mm -hmm. So we did a, uh, a thing called home for the holiday. So it was, with, it was Mariah's big thing. It was like an adoption special. And then Destiny's Child before Beyonce was Beyonce and Destiny's Child and maybe yeah. more. And I think it was Enrique and Iglesias. I think that was the the four groups. And all of them perform live. They, you know, for an audience. And then Mariah goes back into a recording studio. None of them else, none, none of the rest of them do. She sings over her live performance. Okay. And then they engineer that. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is a little. So don't when you hear some of these perfect vocals, don't yeah, really yeah. believe them because they're not real. Um, yeah. The same thing for you know. I always have to tell people that about like Instagram and TikTok because people are like, their voice sounds amazing. I'm like it's recorded and they are lip syncing. They are yeah. trust trust me. I know some of them, and they yeah. they tell me the programs they're using. It's crazy because people. You yeah. know, you hear these things and you and, or you see these photos and there's this expectation and it's so hard on people that are younger and or even yeah. older who are trying so hard to be a part of it and associated with it. And they don't know, you know, the 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 electronic side of things. And it's, that's it's, me. I'm like, I'm just sitting with bedhead on my couch singing wrong. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I'm it's, like, that's I'm just not somehow. recorded, I swear. Yeah, but it's really hard. It's like really, you know, people have this expectation. I know nothing yeah. about social media. People yeah. keep on bringing up to me algorithms. I don't really understand what that means. <laughs> they were like, people aren't seeing any of your posts anymore because of the algorithms. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, you got to post more. I don't want to post more, but yeah. you have to. I'm almost 50. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do a podcast and I'll be good. So the, I, I worked in that, that respect. And then I moved to New York City. Actually, funny mm -hmm. story. I auditioned for American Idol and I was one of the finalists. And I didn't get to the bear to the to the um because they do 
what you don't see on TV, they do more interviews right. and auditions right. and stuff. And so I had I had written my very first musical. It was called Detour. Um, and I had put it up. And one day, one of the leads was out. And so I had to fill in for him. Anyway, okay. the, the guy that was the cameraman in the last audition, like, chased after me. He said, I have a question for you. I said, what? He said, were you in Detour? I said, well, if you saw it the weekend that I was there, yes. He yeah. said, who wrote the music? I said, I did. He said, that's what you should be doing for a living. That is the best music I've ever heard in my life. And it was like, it was literally a shift. Yeah. Went, that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. Because of that guy, I wish I knew who he was. Because yeah. of that guy. And so I moved to New York a week later. Because I'm very fast like that. Um, I love even that. With, even with like LA, I was like, I'm going to move to LA. Packing my bags. Obsessed. Very Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I moved to New York. And within the week of being in New York, I went to go see Andrew Lipp, who's another incredible composer, another Jewish composer. And uh, he was performing at the Arch Nova. And it was supposed to be Julia Murney and Adina Menzel. Adina was sick. And so this young girl comes out in like sweatpants um, and starts singing a uh, song from A Little Princess. And I was like, who is that girl? And I look at the program, it's this girl named Shoshana B. Shoshana B. Yes, <laughs> from the musical Hairspray. And I had never heard of her before. Most people had it. She was, you know, chorus, Shelly, and uh, Hairspray. She had yet to go on uh, as uh, Tracy Turnblad yet. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, I was obsessed. I, she has her website. I went to her website. I wrote her a message. Um, we got to work together. I had liked her. I knew one person in the theater industry, and that was Billy Porter, because we lived next door to each other in L.A. Nice. So we had sung through some stuff together, some, some of my material. He used to sing Kiss the Air all the time. And um, yep. and uh, we, I, Shoshana, I said, will you work with me? And she wrote me back, okay. That was it. And um, Barry Shoshana. Yeah. And, um, and we met up at this place called Shatler Studios, which was like the big place that people used to audition and do rehearsals back in the day. And we met up and I totally remember it. She walked in. She always, we always fight about how this really happened. I remember it with her walking with Matt Morrison. She said, that's not true, but that's how I remember it. I didn't know <laughs> who Matt Morrison because I'd never seen Hairspray. So I don't know why I wouldn't even know that. She walked in with these big sunglasses and these green capri pants and her big like high shoes. And she dropped her bag and she was like, I'll be back. I was like, okay. <laughs> And she like, she was very cold and she walked back in and she goes, okay, play me something. Like very okay. like flippant. And I was like, ah, uh, and in my head, I was like, it didn't matter that she was coarse. I was like, she's the biggest star in the world. Yeah. Uh, because it's Broadway. So in your head, you're like Broadway, 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 anyone on Broadway. Oh, you're on Broadway. You're amazing. You know, I was, a, I was little, I was 23, 24. Oh, no, I must, have, I must have been younger than that, 20, maybe 21, 22. And I played her, the first song I played her was a song that I wrote called How Did I End Up Here, which happened to be on my second album later in life. Uh, yeah. And Lewis ended up recording. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's nice. That's fine. And she was about to leave. She's like, okay, nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I have one more. This is the real one. I don't, I really did think she was going to love How Did I End Up Here. I don't know why, because it was like very riffy at the time. And so sure, like, sure, yeah, no yeah, longer. yeah. Uh, and home was not home was very when I first you know wrote it it was very I don't know if you can even are you gonna play it right now Scott I'm uh, yeah. oh my gosh but I don't know if you'll be able to hear it this is the song that's in my rep book mm -hmm. right now or has okay, been literally it. since theater oh, school beautiful creation Sweet intoxication, you're in my life. Listen, the fact that we're able to kind of do this with I the know. Zoom, that's lovely. Yeah. And I just remember <laughs> I went, so hold me in your heart. Yeah. You're the Protect you for and I remember looking at her and she had her sunglasses on and I saw the tear fall and in that moment I I remember thinking I remember it I remember it I remember 
I'm a, I have this weird memory. People make fun of it all the time. I can remember everything. I can remember people's names. I remember what you're wearing. I remember that outfit. I'm just very strange yes. like that. And I remember where the piano was. And I remember looking over to her to my right side. And she was sort of in the crevice of this baby grand piano. Yeah. And I remember her taking her sunglasses off, putting them uh, on the piano. And I remember going, I got her. Oh, I just remember that feeling like I got her. I got it. I got it. This is, I remember knowing this is, this is it. This is, this is it. This is the next Ooh, I'm gonna, step. I'm going to start crying. Yeah. But I wow, remember feeling it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. very young. I was very young. And I just remember that feeling. And the song was done. And she said, okay, I don't have anywhere to go. And because she had told me she was in a rush. Mm. She said, I don't have anywhere to go. Let's go work on it. Funny enough, the studio was, I had only paid for it for like a half an hour. And then they had no more studios left. So we had to go to this, a friend of mine who is now a huge musical uh, director and everything, but his house. Mm -hmm. And we sat down there and worked on the song. And then she called a friend and said, hey, we're coming into the studio to record. It was like that fast. It was all in one day. Wow. And we went wow. to a studio and we recorded home. Uh, demo version of home, which was the one that was on my website for forever. And I put that up on my website and people started, that's where people started gradually going, who is this person? And she was, you know, this is, again, she was still chorus. She hadn't got on his tracing yet. She had obviously not done Wicked yet. There was no, Shoshana was building up in the ranks just because she had done concerts. But outside yeah. of that, from the, no one would go, oh, Shoshana Bean, who is that, right? She had done this big concert a few months later. I wouldn't say it was like a month later. And she was singing a song with Matt Morrison, whatever time we have. And then she said, can I sing home? I was like, of course. And I think she had just given her notice to leave Hairspray. I think that's what it was about. So it must have been a few months later. And we went and all the big performers were there. I remember it still to this day. She was late. I think there was a reason she was like, she had something that she was doing, but I was, I'm always early, very Jewish personality. And I showed up and I, and everyone's there, you know, uh, Anthony Rapp, Stephanie J. Block, Cheyenne Jack. No, Cheyenne mm -hmm. wasn't there. Um, Matt Morrison, Julia Murney, all these people that I love and they're all here and no one's talking to me because why would they? Who the, no one knows who I am. They're all talking. And I'm just saying there, Shoshana comes. I'm still not talking. And then, Jeffrey Sofa, the producer, brings us all out and we're sitting on these lounge chairs up to the right of the, the, the stage. And Shoshana comes up and introduces me. And then I, right after it was done, I went and sat back down. And I just remember Anthony Rapp comes, like taps me on my leg and he goes, you're going to be huge. And I just remember that. Yeah. And then Stephanie J. Block and Julia Murray afterwards were like, can you write us a song? And I was like, yes, I can. Yep. <laughs> uh, yes, I can. Let's meet tomorrow at Shetler Studios. And so I met them back to back. Because I'm scared yes. that they, no one would, you know, if I was like, sure, get, let me get your number. Let's do all these things. Yeah, you, know? you just pressed yeah. play. You just did it. Completely. I was like, let's meet tomorrow. Yes, we will. This is going to happen. And so, and I remember waking up really super early to call Shetler Studios and get a studio. And I did. And I, I also had to bring a friend with me to play piano because I was too nervous to do that for everyone and then that's where stephanie picks never neverland which was like the song that i written that everyone hated that i ever played for people and so it was like in the back of my book and she had you know she was like i'm going to sing this for the big broadway world.com um uh concert that they're doing called standing ovations at joe's pub and i was like okay and i showed up we hadn't spoken since that day and so i didn't know if she was really doing it or not i showed up and she sang a different song and it was like oh no and then she, they brought her back out for the second act and then that was the that was the change of my career that okay. was because broadwayworld.com decided to put that song up first right on their website and broadway world was just starting out as well so it almost was like you know, the sink of yeah. things. And this was before unknown composers were really doing anything. We were all, you know, everyone for the most part was, you know, doing song cycles, if yep. anything. Yeah. But they were all writing shows. No albums were coming out of an unknown composer. It was unheard of. So I was like, okay, this is this is it. So I reached out to all these agents and I was like, look, I'm going to be the biggest star. 
sign and everyone <laughs> yeah. was like, you know, I don't like your music, not gonna happen. No, everyone said no. And then I was like, you know what, then I'm gonna do this myself. I'm gonna yeah. do it myself. So I got a job at Starbucks. I did the 4.30 a.m. shift. I went yep. from Starbucks to Paris Commune in the West Village. Um, and then I went from Paris Commune to Stonewall Inn. And I did back to back to back jobs. And I did that for an yep. entire year. I raised $17,000. This is obviously before any of those GoFundMe sites. Though I don't think even if those were around, I don't think I would have ever done that. It's just sure. not me. It's not my personality. My personality yep. is to prove to myself I can do it. You know, I feel you just, on that. just who yep. I am. And I raised the money. I put out that album. This was back in the day. This is when iTunes was just becoming something. It was an Apple Music. Mm -hmm. You know, it was iTunes and, you know, you couldn't stream music. You could only buy it. Yeah. Uh, 129. <laughs> yes, that was it. And it was like, you know, it was an exciting time. I released the album. I had no expectation. No one knew most of the performers on the album. It was Stephanie J. Block had done one show. Shoshana had done one show. There was no Wicked yet, right? Right, right, oh, right. That's Eden had done Wicked because she was on the tour at that time. You know, Cheyenne hadn't done All Shook Up yet. Jonathan had only done Spring Awakening. So it wasn't like these were like the, the major stars, you know, though I guess there's no stars in theater, but you know what I mean? There, there yeah, wasn't yeah. a known commodity of people. And so I released this album with no expectations. And I just remember starting to get messages from like London and... Australia very quickly after it was released. And I remember Dress Circle, which is this big record store in London, and they had bought like five copies of it. Then they reached out to me like a week later and was like, we need like 500 copies. The amount of people that want this album and can you sign them for us? And, you know, and it was like, what? What? And I had, I had stupidly made 2,000 copies of Dreaming Wide Awake, sent it to CD Baby, and they were like, uh, we only accept 20 copies. And I said, I remember saying to them, it's going to sell. <laughs> Just you wait. It's going to sell. And it did. Within a week, they were yeah. like, we need another 2,000 copies. And it just kept going. It's, I mean, it's almost sold about a million copies. Yeah. Right now. I think it's at like 750 or something, 750,000 copies of streaming and, and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's it's obviously still to this day my most successful album. The other album. Talk, talk about like having that memory or that image. Like I can picture that that album cover. Like yes, well, it, you know it's my, iconic. My sleeve is <laughs> is actually the yeah. Cover. Um, wow. Yeah. So there's a there's a line in the very first song. The very first song is called "I'm a Star." And the the there's a line that says, "I had dreamt wide awake," and I had originally talked with a record label that was going to release the album and then they sent me like all these album covers and they were horrible and i don't know what made me go and then they were telling me how much they were going to take from the album and i was like uh, f this i'm not doing this yeah. i'm gonna do and again you didn't release things on your own it just was not heard of it was like all this like this is before you know the the there was you know self labels and stuff yeah 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 I don't know. I, I had so many, my balls were much bigger back then. <laughs> and and uh, I was looking, I remember that line and I looked up above me and my grandmother's painting was above me. And it says, I had dreamt wide awake. I dreamt with my heart. And I looked up and I go, that's the album cover. Whoa. That's, yep. that's it. That is it. Yep. Yes, and, it is. Uh, and you know, it's still so funny because I will see people, I've, I, I went to Disney recently and I was on uh, uh, the Tiana's uh, Bayou in the line and some person was like, I know that album cover on my arm. That's what <laughs> like, That's my like, <laughs> and then he, no, he realized it afterwards. He was like, wait, you're, <laughs> you're Jason Robert Brown. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've, had, I've done that one too before. Um, and so, yeah, so that album came out and it was amazing. I mean, it changed my life forever, you know, and then a year later I released the second album and a year after that I released the third album and the, the best things that I ever did with those albums was that I got a lot of international performers to join yeah. me for those albums which really changed the, the trajectory of my career and then the albums, those were very successful and I, 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 I it's probably a lot of it has to do with iTunes before streaming came out but then streaming came out and the album sales started dwindling and no one was buying physical CDs and 
you know, it's just, that's, that's life that happens. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I released that Cynthia Revo album that, you know, yeah. things start picking up again a little bit. So it's, you know, the, the industry is really hard. I say this to you, Jillian, as well, because I know you're an actress and a singer. You know, it's tough. Yeah. It's like, you know, some days you're like, I'm going to, this is going to be big for me. And some moments you're like, I can't do this anymore. I yep. can't, this is not a life, to, this is not the way I want to survive my life. And I don't want to have to give in to the rationalization of what everyone's telling me I need to do. Because, you know, I'm watching a lot of my friends who are big on these social media platforms, but they're also doing really stupid things to be big yeah. on them. You know, they're like, let me go to McDonald's and sing you a ditty. And they had to do that like 500 times in order to get that one video that worked. I don't want to do that. I don't have the time yeah, to do fair. that. It's not, I, I want people to hear my music and like it and come to my concert or buy the album. And that's, that's all I want to do. So, you know, formatting myself into that sort of world is just not what, you know, works for me. It works against my music, unfortunately, with today's day and age, but hopefully one day we'll go back in time. It's it's so funny. I love that you mentioned that because there's a beauty of what we do is like liveness. Like there is that sort of human soul that you can only really experience through live performance, through being in community in the flesh. And yeah. it is so fascinating to see the sort of digital takeover of what our trajectory is in this thing called the industry now. You know, like there's there is that constant push and pull of well, I'm going to post this because, you know, I I know getting it out there and tagging such and such and getting likes like that would be good at this point. But then at the end of the day, it's that you're hungry to just be there, be in the room or be on the stage. Um, So yeah, there's, there is that, that balance that kind of you, we've, we've had to introduce into our journey now with, with such a digital presence in the world Absolutely. you know and it's also hard too because you put something out and you can spend a long time on it i've spent long times on certain videos and mm-hmm. I'm, i mean I, okay maybe like two of them and i like, <laughs> put it out there with this expectation okay well i've spent a lot of time on this this will take off i'm gonna and then you're like okay three likes later and you're go yeah this is i just yeah. don't have the time for this i don't have the time for this it's yeah. just and it's it has nothing to do with our talent it just has to do yeah. with the way that social media is built right now you know it's the same thing as you know our election here like you everything is is obviously on my feed is just election based and that's because of how the yeah. algorithms are are focused because i'm interested and so that's all i see i don't see any of my friends posts anymore i don't see yeah. what's going on in my friend's life that's a sad commentary and I think what's important to take from what you said so far too, and, and anyone listening, especially those listening and watching, like coming up in the industry is like, it is, even though there is such a digital platform now, like it is imperative. It is so important to get out to network, like yes. on the ground running, 100%. shake the hands, see the shows, meet the folks. And yeah. then like you said too, Scott, like, it's like you had a dream, you had an aspiration and you just press play on it. Like, just go, go you for it. To. Do it. We only have this one life. And if the last four years, especially 2020 to 2022, taught us, we totally lost our agency. We were fully yeah. shut down. And it's mm-hmm. like happiness and taking your own life by the reins is the yeah. only remedy now. I always say, yeah. you know, so, someone will say to me, you know, I'll go, oh, I want so and so to sing my song. They're like, well, that's not going to happen. But why? Yeah. I call them. I don't care. Yeah. I've, call, I've called many <laughs> of people who have hung up before. Yeah, I have. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Listen, I wrote Leia Salonga like 55 times <laughs> until she finally responded to me and said she was singing my song. What happens Absolutely. if I gave up on 53? Yeah, totally. You know, that would not have happened. And I wouldn't yeah. have had a built-in audience for the Philippines. And I also wouldn't have worked with one of my favorite you know, singers that have ever graced the history of the world. So yeah. ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, you have to keep pushing. You do, but yeah. you can do the things that you do well and that's okay. Yeah. You know? Thousand percent. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love this. Okay. This is a perfect segue to well, part of the reason why we're here too. The, one of the main reasons is Scott Allen and friends, the concert and masterclass that's happening here in Toronto. Yes. So talking about coming to be in person with all of these artists 
up here in the great white north. So Dr. Bird Productions is the theater company that is helming this experience. So we're very, very grateful. Recently on The Cup, we just reviewed their concert production of Jekyll and Hyde, which was- Yeah, how was it? Oh my gosh, Scott, it was astonishing. Was it? That wow. musical is such a like a hidden nugget for me. Like yeah. I forget how, but like Lucy and Emma, but especially Lucy are like very close to my heart. And the performers that sang those women were beautiful oh, with yeah. a capital B. And our Jekyll and Hyde again was, I was like, your voice should be off Broadway or on Broadway. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was very well done. Good. So there's a whole episode of me gushing more about that. But yes, yeah, so Scott Allen and Friends are going to be happening uh, in, it's going to be happening in November, mid-November. And it's a weekend. Scott's coming up to Toronto and there is a cast of performers that will be going through a master class with you on the Saturday and then you and them will be performing on the Sunday. That That's how that weekend is mapped out. That correct? is correct. And I have yet to meet any of them or hear them sing. So okay. I am going to go in blind. I know some of them. I have them. heard some of them. So um, like you are in for a treat, I will I can't say. Wait. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I love, there's nothing better than hearing other people tell my story through their own eyes. Yeah. Uh, to awaken their own senses. You know, because people will often come in and start singing it like Shoshana or Cheyenne or Jonathan. I'll go, no. Yeah. I don't want Shoshana's story. If I wanted Shoshana's story, I would call Shoshana up on the phone. And I'd say, tell me your story and sing me home. I don't want that. I want to know what the song is about for you. And I want to find the the actual clothing that you wore during that part of your life that represents what this yeah. means to you. Um, and so it's it's an incredible opportunity for me to sit back and, and just relish in that. And I always find like one or two performers that I just like flip out on. So that's always exciting too. I love that. Okay, in true Scott Allen fashion, I have to ask, is someone already singing home in your in the group? I, you know, I actually don't know what songs are being <laughs> sung yet. I literally- I'm just like, am I sort myself into this weekend? I don't, I don't, you know, I really don't. I can look it up. And see, I mean, I haven't gotten. Up, a, but I like, don't think I've actually gotten the song list yet. I think he said he was going to send me yeah. the list of songs. I don't know who's singing. So Ethan what. is also a very great friend of mine. Um, yeah. Him and I did some concerts together up north, so I, I could text him. Okay, figure it out. yeah, I don't. Uh-huh. I really don't know any. I don't know who's singing what. That's, that's exciting, that's, though. That's you're going in fully blind. I really, you know, I've been so concentrated on this London concert and getting myself out there because I have a big announcement that's going to be coming out when I get to London that we haven't shared yet. And so we've been sort of working on that. And I, I, I've allowed the producers here because, you know, when someone invites me to do something, I get the opportunity to sit back and and allow them to take the reins, which is very rare. I'm yep, normally the one who's in charge. And so even with the London concert, because I'm also... I, I I like things done my way. So if it's not done my way, I will then bring myself into the scope, which I've done a little bit of in the London concert, even though it's being produced by other people. But, you know, it's a really great opportunity when I get to just sort of sit back and Absolutely. And, and relish in, in the talents of other people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So the Saturday will be a masterclass with a selection of performers. And there's actually an opportunity for folks to audit the class as well. I know there's there's only a certain amount that can, but obviously I will post underneath this episode uh, the link to the concert that will be happening on the Sunday, but then also a link to audit the masterclass if folks are interested to just be in the room where it happens, as as we say. So I guess, can you give us a little a little sort of blueprint of how your masterclasses go or like, you know, yeah. what, what you usually bring into the space, like what you offer to the performers partaking in, in them? Absolutely. I think one of the things that's the most important thing is, is finding the intent of the song and understanding the story of the song. You know, the best singers on Broadway aren't always the greatest singers. They are representing the lyric and they are telling the story in a way that is honest and open. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's always essential is finding a way to take walls down and make sure that we are 
really communicating what needs to be communicated? Are we internalizing? Are we externalizing? Are we adding more breath support here? Are we right. le- giving ourselves a nice straight tone? Are we adding vibrato? Why are you over riffing? Why? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, why? Why? Does that tell your story? No. Great. Stop. You know, especially in today's day and age of American Idol and America's Got Talent, it's it's like everyone wants to be a superstar so much that they're pushing so hard. And one of the things yeah. that you need to make sure that's, you know, intentionally communicated with your body is to relax. That's one of the things that's so imperative as, as a performer is relaxing mm-hmm. the body so that we can really hone in on using our breath support and and yeah. getting air communicated. Otherwise, there's there's going to be a lack of intent there. We have to make sure that we're really giving ourselves over. So each performer, every person that I work with in a master class, there's going to be some some people are going to oversing, some people are, are going to undersing, some people are, are going to be too insecure, some people are going to be scared, some people are going to think they're the greatest performer that's ever lived to get up there with the intention that I'm going to discover them and put them on an album. Some people are going to not tell a story. Some people mm-hmm. are, are going to overtell a story. So it's each each performer gets a different way in, and so. You know, uh, in the course of the time that I worked um, during uh, COVID with different voice teachers to make sure that I was teaching properly and and proper techniques vocally, you know, I'm able to use that and uh, push them forward in both different senses, make sure that we're healthy on our vocal cords. um, And we're also, you know, intentionally telling our story. I love that that is kind of your foundation because that's uh, absolutely like singing healthy and telling the story that to me is like, that's, that's the sweet sauce that, and everything else yeah. is, is accoutrement to just help lift that. Too many people. I get it. I want to show off. I want to show every trick I can do in one song. That doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. Cause you're doesn't, missing, you're missing what the story is. Like it, it's, it it's, doesn't yeah. work. You know, it's yeah. so funny. I did a concert in, in Los Angeles and there's this girl and I'm not going to mention her by name. And she has a big following online and uh, she has a beautiful voice. She came to sing one of my songs. I'm not even going to mention the name of the song because that, that would get too much away. And she stood up on stage for the sound check and she just ruined it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like every riff that you could think of. And I literally got really <laughs> upset. And I mm-hmm. said, stop it. Thankfully, she was one of the, the first people to get up in the sound check. And I looked at everyone. I said, listen, I don't care who you are, yep. what Broadway show you've been on, how many followers you have. I don't care. Mm-hmm. And guess who else doesn't care? The audience. The audience is coming to feel emotional. Yes. Okay? They are here <laughs> to be a part of something that is bigger yep. than what you're able to give them when you overdo a song. Yeah. Your job is to sing the lyric and honor it. Amen. And if you are not honoring this lyric, you are doing a disservice to yourself, to Mm -hmm. your talent, and to me. Yes. So it is time to try this again. And I said to this performer, what is this song about? Mm -hmm. What is it about? And, you know, she gave me this answer and I said, that's not what this song is about. This song, when I wrote it, was about me putting my feet in the sand, watching the ocean and thinking to myself, can I walk out into the ocean and die? Mm. That's what the song was about. for me. Can I be taken away from this world? And would I be okay with that? And do I want to do that? Mm -hmm. And she started crying. She goes, I guess that's what the song is about for me, too, because I am in a very bad depression right now. I said, thank you. Sing the damn song without riffing. And she sang it. And all everyone that was there in the soundtrack sobbing their eyes out. Yeah. Because in that moment, you're honest. And that's that is what what it is. is. And the audience is there for that reason. A kid doesn't come to the theater and go, I want to play Annie because Annie is going, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. That's not why they want to play Annie. They want yeah. to play Annie because the girl that's playing Annie 
is telling them a story about abandonment and survival. I think we have, we had remembered like we're vessels of vulnerability. Like that yes. is what a performer is. Yes. And it, like you said, regardless of your star status or where you're coming from, every single moment is the present first time you're doing it. And that Absolutely. takes hard work and diligence, but the utmost vulnerability and yeah. And you're a vessel. Like it's not that you're using essence of you, but you're, you are just there to tell the story like that. And I think a lot of folks, a lot of performers forget that, right? Like they get on this sort of high of, of the industry and, but it's like, no, go back to why you, there's only one you in this world and there's only this one song in this world. And what is that marriage and how are you going to do due diligence to everything. And like you said, again, that's the audience is, is there. What is your story in this? I want yeah. that I said to you, what are the clothes that you wore? Yeah. Because and I love our, that. our job is to walk up into that attic and open up that treasure trunk of clothes that we've worn throughout our entire life. Okay. Most people who are not performers, they get to take that key and throw it away. They don't ever need to go back out there, but you are a performer. So unfortunately for your life, if you've been abused, if you've been hurt, if you've been bullied, there's a piece of clothing up there yeah. that you wore that day. Yeah. And you're gonna have to wear it. Yeah. Does it suck? Yeah, but this is your job. So tell you know, that is that is what I do my very best. And you'll hear, I'm sure, at the concert, there'll be a mixture because people get scared and then they'll get back up there and they'll think my friends are in this audience and I don't want to do what he just told me to do because it doesn't show my voice off in the way that I wanted to show show it off. So I am gonna oversing it. And I'm going to go back to where I wanted to do it. And I, you'll see disappointment in my face always, um, or yeah. you'll see, you'll see joy. Yeah. And people say it all the time. They're like, I could see when you're happy from a performance and when you're not. And right. the happiest I am is never, never when it's over. It's yeah. always when it is told truthfully. Yeah. And because it's hard. Like, yeah. Yeah, I had to yeah. write it. I wrote those songs with pain. I wrote the songs because I was hurting. If I were to go, you know, and play anything more than I go, lately it seems I don't know why I feel so sad. Yeah. It <laughs> looks like there's flowers. Then people would go, uh, no, they like that song because I literally opening up my wrist and saying, yeah. look, look. Your flower yeah. is fully bloomed. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, or not at all. Yeah. So it's like you you have a purpose. Use it. Wow. I feel like that is a, a lovely sort of pinning on that. You have a purpose. Use it. That definitely, I think, takes us, that could round us out of our discussion today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Julian. I really appreciate it. Of course. That. Oh my gosh, this has been so great. Again, folks, I'm going to post everything down below, links to see the concert on Sunday, November 17th. And then if you'd like to audit the masterclass, I'll pop information down there as well. And yeah, the selection of performers you have, Scott, I, I know of some of them. Some of them are friends of mine. Some of them I've heard. Don, our stages as well. You are in for a treat a yeah, mixture right. of of voices for you there. Super, super exciting. And wait. welcome to Canada for your first time. <laughs> Even if you don't get a chance to go out and see anything, I know you'll feel the warmth and the true like Canadian friendly vibes. You know, if, yeah. if people are like, how was Toronto? What did you see? You're like, I saw good people. That's, 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 that's definitely what time. you'll see. Yeah, <laughs> so on that note, folks, we'll take our our mugs and do a final cheers here at the cup dr bird productions thanks again for bringing scott to us yes. post their info down there too and also cup of hemlock theater if you're watch listening to us on youtube facebook instagram twitter all the things coh theater um thanks for tuning in and there's lots more goodies happening as we round out 2024 i can't believe we're already Oh nearing the end let's just hope the right person wins our election shall we yes that too so let's do a cheers an optimistic cheers, cheers and finding our purpose and telling our stories thanks folks and i'm at kamala you. harris by the way if anyone thought that i was talking about someone else yes yes yes, yes 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 yeah. go power cheers cheers and cheers. we'll see everyone next time on the cup